Carolina School of Medicine. Dr. Hooper is an international expert in child neuropsychology with much of his research in clinical activity and community outreach devoted to developmental disabilities. He's also a currently a professor of psychiatry, psychology, pediatrics, and education at uh, UNC and carries a number of titles at the Carolina Institute of Developmental Disabilities, including director of training and education, director of child and adolescent neuropsychology and associate professor. So today he's here to really share with us um, his experiences uh, and his participation with the LEND program, which is one of the mandates and charges, or as we think about the future, how to build a workforce capacity, how we can collaborate with them and partner with them. So I'll turn this over to Dr. Hooper. Dr. Hooper. Thank you. This was, uh, uh, it's, I'm delighted to be here, and I'm real sorry that I have to bring everybody back from break. I know that's a real hard thing. And uh, I was watching uh, the last talk with Sika, and she told a joke and nobody laughed. So I felt bad about that. But I may be just as prone to that uh, being the person who comes in after the break as opposed to right before the break. So with that, I hope everybody is a little more uh, awake. Uh, as Michael Watson noted this morning, there's been some initial discussion with the AUCD and LEND Network and the Southeast Regional Collaborative, and uh, we are going to move into that today. This talk today uh, really is uh, an outreach uh, from that, and my job today uh, is to talk to you about what a LEND is and what are the possibilities for collaboration. So, I want to provide you uh, an overview of what the LEND is. If you haven't heard about it, you should know what it is, and, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. We also have a Southeast Region LEND consortium that I think is going to be the primary partner with the Southeast Region Collaborative. Yes, genetics are important to LEND programs, and I'll share with you how that's happening today and where we hope to take it as we talk about possibilities of increased partnership. And of course, if we have time for questions, I want to be able to talk about that. One other point I'll mention today, which I think is very important, is that Joan Scott from uh, HRSA talked this morning or this afternoon about the legislative mandates of HRSA to conduct genetics testing. And I will say that that's, the LEN programs fall under that. Now, we don't necessarily do the genetics testing, but we really need to uh, up our game in terms of what we know and how we partner with the Southeast region. Issues around newborn screening and, in particular, long-term follow-up of those newborns could be right in our wheelhouse in terms of facilitating potential collaborative activities. So let's jump in and talk a little bit about the LEND. LEND programs provide uh, training. This is primarily what our mandate is. We provide training to long-term, primarily graduate level, interdisciplinary trainees. In addition to that, we also do interdisciplinary care and service. And the primary purpose is to improve the health infant, of infants, children, and adolescents with disabilities. So there is an emphasis on developmental disabilities. And as we talk in the LEND uh, network. It is the big DD where we're talking about intellectual disabilities as well as the little DD where we have things like ADHD and dyslexia and those types of, of manifestations. We accomplish this by preparing trainees from diverse professional disciplines, and I'll share some of those with you in a bit. And the interesting thing about the LEND network is we do the training, but we're also training our folks to move into leadership roles. So we will train the people to see the patients and to learn about various kinds of challenges that they're going to face with patients and families, but we're also training them to move into the public health workforce with advanced knowledge and how you negotiate and manage and navigate in an interdisciplinary environment. Where did these things come from? Well, they grew from the 1950s efforts of the Children's Bureau, and the Children's Bureau was the 
precursor to maternal and child health that we know today. And basically that Children's Bureau was to identify children with disabilities as a Title V program priority. Today, the LEND programs are funded under the 2006 Combating Autism Act, and they're administered by HRSA and Maternal Child Health. The Autism Cares Act, which is the, uh, the continuation of the Combating Autism Act, recently, last week, just passed the House and is awaiting Senate approval, and I think this will be probably one of maybe two things that they have universal agreement on in our legislature. But the fact is, is this undoubtedly is going to pass and the lens sits squarely in this. So we have a, uh, a mandate to look at autism pri primarily, but the terminology is very interesting because it's autism and related developmental disabilities. So we do and continue to do the big DD and the little DD. LENS are an interdisciplinary leadership training program. This is the, one of the primary interdisciplinary training programs within the Bureau. And typically, almost all of these programs are uh, housed within university systems and usually sit in partnership with University Centers for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities, which is funded by the Developmental Disabilities Act of the Administration for Children on Developmental Disabilities. And in addition to that, we are mandated to collaborate with local university hospitals and health care centers. In addition to that, I'll show you a graphic in a little bit, we are required to partner with our state agencies. To get there, we really want to sort of nudge this leadership um, model in a way that it's interdisciplinary, and it prepares folks to move into the public health sector. So we're getting, again, these long-term graduate level trainees from as many as 13 to 15 different disciplines. And they come in and they work together in a unified way, not only in the content around developmental disabilities, but also the process of what we know about moving into leadership roles in the public health sector. So, as a sort of core statement here, we want to prepare professionals for cutting edge leadership roles that will allow them to direct and facilitate culturally and linguistic competent and family-centered interdisciplinary efforts, and that includes systems change, to improve the health status of infants, children, and adolescents who have or are at risk for developing some developmental disability. To date, we have 43 LENs. They are located in 37 states. Collectively, they form a national network. I will say that this network is not a hub and spoke network like the Southeast region or the genetic collaboratives are around the country. But there is still a network here that shares information and collaborates across regional lines. Consequently, in each of the states in the Southeast region, in Region 3, we have leadership in these areas. If it's not in the land, it's in a USAID, whereby the Southeast region representatives could partner. And the saying goes for the lens. I broke it. There we go. Thank you. It's wonderful when it works. At least the slides are still up. The saying goes is that with each LEND program, if you've seen one LEND program, you've seen one LEND program. And so each one of these LEND programs is unique. It has its own sort of complexion with respect to faculty and the areas that they attack, the different degrees and types of relationships they have with their state agencies, and the relationships they have within their own university systems. The other interesting thing about this, and this is as we think about collaborating, we are required to have family faculty members involved. With that said, I understand that you have a family partnership as well, and 
gosh, my guess is, is some of those are going to be the same family, some of those folks. All LEND programs, though, despite their differences, do share some common objectives. They advance the knowledge and skills of all child health professionals, provide high quality interdisciplinary education with a focus on the integration of services from state and local agencies and organizations, private providers, and communities. They provide health professionals with skills that foster community-based partnerships. So we are also engaged in continuing education in the community and technical assistance. Many of the LENDs also do interdisciplinary services, some within their clinics, some within the community, and like ours in North Carolina, we do both. And we're really nudged to look at innovative practices to, to pull in the underserved populations, enhance cultural competency, family-centered care, and again, these interdisciplinary uh, relationships. All the LENDs are also charged with focusing on leadership competencies. Now this is important because as I said earlier, what we're trying to do is to get folks involved, not just to do a job, but to move into leadership roles in these areas, taking in that interdisciplinary perspective. As I go around the country, even within LEND programs, when I do site visits, I gotta tell you, the, the sort of siloing of resources continues to be pretty uh, obvious. And what we really want to do as we begin our discussions with the CERC is to see if we can sort of reach out to each other in a way that we can avoid that and focus on these leadership competencies. And this is what we encourage all of our trainees to do. There are 16 of these, and I won't belabor these for you, but trust me when I tell you that each one of these is built into the training program for a specific trainee. Obviously, some folks come in high in some areas and, and low in others, and we work with each trainee in an individual capacity. Each training program has a leadership training model. This is the one that we use. Uh, we have a, a whole sort of training set of modules that begin with a week intensive and extend throughout the year in terms of learning conflict resolution, how do you engage in interdisciplinary disagreements and boundaries and, and how professionals interact around those boundaries. And we work through those things in vivo as well as in case study modules. Every program has this. We've actually done some research on this and found that by doing this leadership intensive model, the capabilities of our trainees actually has a significant change versus those who have not gone through this. So there is value added to having very specific leadership training that focuses on developmental disabilities and public health issues. We're real proud of that, and it's one model that's now being replicated across the lens. All the lens have these five components. Uh, the weighting of these will depend on your lend. Uh, we like to, in North Carolina, highlight all of these, and I know uh, I think Richard Ferranti's here somewhere. Richard, you were back in the back. You do all five of these as well uh, in terms of the grant-driven uh, aspects of what we're required to do. And again, I think when we look at these major goals from the LEND, the fact of the matter is, is that we probably have some low-hanging fruit that we can capitalize on in some, if not many, of these areas in terms of how we might partner and how we might collaborate. I mentioned to you earlier that we have this interdisciplinary focus. Well, these are the disciplines that we have in North Carolina. The fact of the matter is, as many, many other folks have different constellations. But again, as you walk down through each one of these, the fact of the matter is that you can see genetics is in there, genetics counselor. Um, we have a family faculty member. Uh, we do a lot at our center with audiology and working with our newborn screening program around hearing issues. There's just a number of things. In North Carolina, we have a high prevalence of treacher Collins syndrome because of the Lumbee Indian population. There's a lot of different possibilities just out of our place where we could have increased collaboration. And when you take the whole Southeast region, every state is going to have their unique nuance where we might be able to partner 
and play together in a more collaborative and productive way. As I mentioned, every trainee has a program. These are the trainee disciplines on the left. They have a plan, and then we walk through the curriculum components. But built in this, one of the things that we could do is have projects that come from the CERC, projects that we collaborate on. And this would be built into the trainees sort of year-long training modules that we would facilitate and work collaboratively to accomplish the goals of whatever that project might be. Every LEND has a similar model. This is ours. Richard, you probably have a different one, and the Georgia one has a different one, and I know Jeff Brosco in Miami has a different one, and that's okay. The fact of the matter is, is this is where uh, we live, but it has a lot of potential for having formalized the, the, the collaboration. As I mentioned, we have state partners as well. Every state has this relationship with LEND. For us, the women and children's health section is where our genetics and newborn screening lives. This is very important because this is also where the, the children and youth branch is that we collaborate with. The Southeast region is our version of the consortium. And here's the members of our Southeast region, very, very similar to yours. And this includes all the LEND and the USAID programs in the group. And we have a mission and a goal, and we parlayed all of our topics that we do uh, into a series of, of, of webinars. And you can see genetics is in there. There are folks who are doing genetics apart from the CERC in the LENDS. One of the things that we have sort of uh, landed on is this this uh, presentation series that we call the Southeast Consortium and AUCD Presents. And what we've done is, is co have conducted a webinar series that goes out to the entire Southeast region, and quite frankly, it goes out to the world when they advertise it. And we've organized this such that we've been working on a regular schedule, and this is a vehicle by which, again, we might be able to collaborate and sharing knowledge across programs. I mentioned to you that yes, genetics is important to LEND as recently as two days ago, this study came out. Some of you may have seen this, um, where the folks in Seattle actually have identified uh, a genetic leak to autism, uh, which is historically considered a multi-gene uh, involvement. But again, we are vitally interested in autism, so this linkage becomes very, very critical. We also have a genetics work group that's put together a, a web page, and Tyler Reimschizel at Vanderbilt has been driving this, and we have training resources, uh, introductory model in genetics and genetics counseling, and again, material that we hope to build on, and again, could be done very nicely with the expertise from the CERC. I've been working at uh, in collaboration with uh, pediatric geneticists at Duke around 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. And what we know about that is despite the fact that it's a relatively common, if not one of the most common genetic conditions, we don't know a lot about it in terms of preschool. So we've been working very diligently to go after scientific translational work, interdisciplinary collaboration, community outreach, clinical activities, family involvement, and training. Again, any one of these would become a very nice partnership with what folks are doing in the region. With my final few minutes, and it is how many? I'm getting one. Let me just share where we are right now. Thank you, I appreciate that. As was mentioned initially, by Michael, we've had this initial meeting with the LENS and the uh, CERT group in November. And it brought us together for, for one of the first times in a formal way, and it really laid the foundation for us going forward. And Lockie Harmon has really been instrumental in sort of herding cats and getting us together in a very nice way. But Ronnie and Hans and folks have been involved as well. So what have we done? We've had a series of conference calls. It's led to this presentation to do a little expose on LEND and to, for us to think about where we are and to talk about barriers. We don't want to make more work for each other and we don't want to cost each other more money. It's more a matter of how we partner to get there. 
So what are the potential collaborative activities? Well, working with trainees and sort of trying to pull together information around that. Technical assistance and training. Again, maybe we can use the AUCD uh, and uh, Southeast Region webinar series to do this. Consumers, we both have family groups that I mentioned, and dissemination, we could share information across web pages. We also have the issue of funding, and we know that the uh, lens are going to be coming up for renewal in another um, probably 12 months, and there's an opportunity. And last but not least, we have this translational clinical research. All of these conditions are seen in the lens in some way, shape, or form, and they're probably in some way, shape, or form coming through the newborn screening and or efforts through the genetics clinic. We also have the issue of patient registries that we could do, and of course, in the research area, this whole gene by environment interaction becomes critical. So, just to conclude, continue discussions. We've got to keep talking and we've got to figure out how we can work together in a collaborative fashion and so that we can leverage our precious resources and build the genetic structure in a thoughtful way across the translational continuum. So stay tuned. More to come. Thank you.